a beautiful June day out there. What date is it? It's June 13th, I think. Um, I had a friend asking me if I would make him a capote. And, um, and I said, absolutely, I, I would do that. <laughs> In exchange, he gave me some bear fat so I can make soap and uh, medicines and stuff. So um, I thought, well, maybe if I'm doing this, why not do it on camera? So this is the pattern I'm going to be working with. I have no idea how long this is going to take me to do. Um, it may be in a whole bunch of uh, different um, videos, but uh, I will definitely be doing this on film because I think it's kind of a cool project to do. Um, where did I get this from? I bought this from Halford Hyde uh, a long time ago. And uh, I don't know if they still have these patterns or not, but... Um, for those of you who are in the United States, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is um, Eagles View Patterns um, in uh, Liberty, Utah. So you can, uh, hopefully you'll be able to see that on, on camera fairly well. I can't tell with my tiny little viewfinder, to be honest with you. So before we get started, um, I just want to repeat something that I said on one of my other videos. I am going to be starting to upload my videos as I go, um, both on, on YouTube here, as well as onto Vimeo. Um, and over time, we're gonna completely come off of YouTube, except for me to announce the videos that you'll be able to find over on Vimeo. But before I go on, I just wanna say thanks so much to my good friend, Dwayne uh, Doherty from, uh, from Hinton. Dwayne, wow, thank you so much for the offer of the music and then sending me this amazing clip, which you guys heard at the beginning. And uh, I will definitely be um, buying more music from Dwayne. Dwayne, thanks. You are absolutely brilliant. And I'm going to leave a link down below where you can go and have a look at Dwayne's channel. He does amazing, amazing stuff. It's just, it's so cool. So um, go and have a look at Dwayne's stuff. And um, yeah. Anyway, let's get started on this pattern. So this comes in uh, about, I don't know, seven or eight sheets. And um, I don't know if you can see this. Let me, let me just spin it around this way. So it comes in a variety of different sizes here. And so what I'm gonna be doing right now is I'm gonna actually cut out the, the largest size. And I'm gonna um, put that on some uh, brown um, postal paper, as much of it as I possibly can anyway, because, you know, if I have to make a really large one later on, I don't want to be cutting my pattern down to here or here and then losing all of that. So I'm going to retrace some of the pattern onto here. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to start cutting these things out. Um, these pieces right here, the sleeve cap fringe and the the hood tassel, you'll notice they don't have any sizing to them. So I don't have to worry about um, making extras of those. However, it is good to put it on more, um, more solid paper, uh, which I will do at some point in time, just not right now. Anyway, you don't need to sit and watch me cut out all of these pieces. So I'm going to switch the camera off. I'm gonna get uh, these pieces cut off or cut up. Uh, redrawn onto some um, other paper and then I'll be uh, I'll be back okay so I've got um, all of my pattern pieces cut out so far and there's one two three four five there's six of the uh, the big pattern pieces um, also within the pattern they give you a little um, blurb about some good sources for ideas on variations and decorations um, and uh, these come in uh, in different books and then I've got some of the ones that I don't really need to uh, to cut twice so to speak this uh, neck fringe for example it's got all of the sizing on here but when I come to cut it I can just kind of fold the paper over wherever the sizing is that I'm going to be working with 
So I've got a neck fringe, hood ties, um, a belt center, and these are the belt ends by the looks of it. Um, a couple of belt loops will cut out the hood tassel, and then this is just the um, the sleeve cap fringe. So um, I'm going to set those aside. I'm going to uh, cut these guys onto some paper so I can have this uh, the large size here, uh, and then I will. Um, I'll go, I think I'm going to go the next size down for my friend's uh, kip out. Okay, I'm going to get that done. And as soon as I have everything taped and cut out, I will be back. So I have my wool blanket and um, at the risk of uh, making this too bumpy, <laughs> I'll show you. I've actually folded it in half crosswise and you'll see the rest of it hanging down there but I've got the two, um, the two um, edges together here and then over on the other side I've taped some of the pattern together and this is on the fold line. I'm going to show you the, um, the pattern of how you have to lay all of the pieces out. So they've got the pieces one through nine, I think it is, and you can actually see, let's see, if I can move my camera properly, sorry about that. You'll see there it says one back, upper, and then there's the lower that I cut out, and you'll see I've taped them together. So it's one big, nice, long sort of piece. All right. So I'm going to um, change views here and I'm going to show you the actual map. That's sort of the layout that they've given. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't include the upper and lower front piece. But um, there is a lot of room on here to actually add that in afterwards. So my blanket is... Um, 168 centimeters by 228 and I think that is 66 by 90 inches um, and on the uh, pattern it says you want it to be either 72 by 90 or 80 by 90 but uh, this seems to be plenty for the next size down from the uh, from the largest size um, so I, I don't think I'm going to have any problems with it. Once I have everything cut out, I will show you all, uh, all of the pieces that I have, and then uh, I'll look at um, sewing this thing together. Okay, and there we are. So those are all the pieces cut out. And I did manage to have a really good look at the, the little map piece that I showed earlier. I'm going to do a close-up of that and show you what I figured out. I started to realize that they did put all the pieces in there. Um, on the, uh, the front upper and lower has the number one on it, as does the back upper and lower. It's also the number one. And that was shown on the map piece. It just showed it as uh, kind of one solid piece altogether. So, um, that's kind of what was confusing me, but uh, I will show that in a close-up. So you can see on, on here, um, this, this part right here, I'm going to draw a little bit of a dotted line down here, because these are two separate patterns. So that part right there is the upper back and that's the lower back. It just looked as though it was one solid piece with just the number one in the very center. So, um, so that uh, the back went on the fold line and then the, uh, the upper front didn't need to be on the fold line. It just needed to have two cut, although it says cut one. On the fold line. So there's the, um, if I were to draw a line through there, which I won't, 
we would have the upper back, lower back, upper front, lower front. So this has to be on the fold line, uh, the upper back, and it actually shows you on the pattern itself. And then over here, this is more or less um, exactly how, uh, how I did it, except with the, with the hood, um, it's also got a fold line on it. So that was folded in half. And it, so that was the shape of the hat. And this part right here, I put on the fold line here um, because it does have a fold line on it that uh, says you need to do that. Um, and then there were like the fringe caps, I had to cut two of each. There was a few things where I cut through the double fabric. Um, I pinned down the, uh, the sleeve and I didn't really put that all on the fold line. Um, I was able to, to do it all um, just in the sort of in the same manner because mine does not have stripes on it. And when I'm talking about in the same manner, I mean I was able to piece it together slightly different than this to effectively take up space on the blanket. Again, there is no pattern on the blanket. It's all just green, so I don't have to worry about putting the pieces in together to suit the pattern. And so the way that they've got this one, this is the 72 by 90 inch um, blanket. So the way that they put the pattern out was to ensure that the stripes went across both sleeves uh, and then also um, just on one side of the hood. And then the stripes were at the bottom of both the front and the back of the jacket. Anyway, so it all works out well. If you don't have a pattern on your blanket, um, you can put it however makes sense to you. Um, but these are really critical if you have the striped pattern on your blanket and if you want to uh, ensure um, that you're going to get all of the pieces that you want. So the next job I have is to, uh, is to get sewing. So that'll be the next part of the video. Okay, I thought I'd better pop in again. Um, disclaimer, <laughs> I'm not a seamstress at all. Um, I make moccasins and I make hide jackets and um, mittens and hats and things like that. But I'm not somebody that really makes um, a lot with clothing or uh, knows much about uh, how to be a seamstress. <laughs> and it shows in my little rookie mistake. Um, those of you who might have skills as seamstresses, <laughs> you're probably laughing and uh, face palming right now. Uh, or were as I was drawing the line down here. Um, big mistake. So what I realized, um, and, and after reading it through fully correctly, I realized, hmm. Um, so this is the back portion of the jacket, uh, upper and lower, and this is the front, upper and lower. And what I should have done was I should have taped the upper and lower together. So the only place I would have to sew is the seam there. And now the way that I have cut it, I now have a seam all the way down here that I now have to cut. So my mistake, big mistake, um, but it's a learning mistake and I won't do it again in the future. Okay, so I'm gonna be sewing uh, from under the armpit all the way down to the bottom and then I'm going to be sewing the seams together of the front and the back. That'll be my first project. So I'm going to get pinning those and then I will start the process of sewing them um, and I'll just show you what stitch I'm using and um, the needles, threads and all the other things that I'll be um, using on this project. Okay, here's the items I'm going to use. A good pair of scissors, Um, a glover's needle, there we go, maybe I'll put that over top of the sinew, you can probably see it better that way, there we go. So glover's needle, so it's got the, um, the three blades on the end of it, hopefully you can see that. Um, and then I'm using some sinew, so this is false sinew, but yeah. this sinew you need to split, and I typically will split my sinew into um, Anywhere from three to four pieces. This one I'm probably going to split into just three pieces. So Quite often if you have a lot of thickness up at the, um, the whole end here, 
Uh, it won't go through the material. Now, I'm using a wool blanket or partially wool blanket, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue, but um, I, I do like to split my sinew. I just find it a whole lot easier to work with. And the way that I do that is just find wherever the natural, um, the natural tear is or the natural split in the sinew. And you'll notice that it kind of gets all tangled up there. So what I do is I hold on to the two ends and then I just pull down and then it starts to just kind of split on its own. Okay, so that's the uh, shoulder seam um, all pinned up. And then of course, along the side, it's probably hard to see there, but uh, those are all pinned up. Now let's uh, take a look and see how I'm going to do the sewing. All right, I'm gonna start off with the um, the shoulder seam here because it'll be the easiest for me to, to show on camera here. And so normally I like to do a, a whip stitch on, um, on the, uh, the tops of all of my seams. Um, but I'm going to do a combination of both a whip stitch as well as uh, just kind of a back stitch. So um, I'm going to start off with doing my, my back stitch. And so I'm going to be starting over at the end where the, um, where the sleeves will be. This is kind of the neck piece right here. So I'm going to start where the sleeve seam would actually be. Just to make it a bit easier to sort of hide that knot. And I'll remove my pin here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to just go directly into the fabric. Pull my thread all the way through. And then move a, uh, I don't know, half a centimeter over or so. And pull through half a centimeter over, pull through. And I'm gonna do that all the way to the end of the line here. And I'll be back when I'm done that. All right, so I'm here at the end, probably a little hard for you to, uh, to see, but I'm coming out the back here. I'm gonna just bring my uh, thread around to the front and I'm going to just push my needle in there. And then sort of a little bit more of a uh, stabilizing stitch as I'm going to come up just above that thread there. It's going crosswise. Now I'm going to loop back down this way. And you'll see in a minute down there. So I'm making a little bit of a cross with my stitches. Might be a bit hard to see here. Um, and then I'm going to flip over uh, on this side and we'll do the same thing. So I'll take a stitch up and then make a cross stitch there. And then we'll come back to the front. And this is just to kind of really stabilize these stitches and make them really nice. So that's all I'm going to do to the end. Uh, and then I'm probably going to whip stitch the top just to make sure that it doesn't fray. So I'm going to continue doing this and I will be back as soon as I've got the front and back pieces sewn together with all of the sleeves done. And then you can have a look at that, see what, it, uh, see what you think. Okay, I think we're going to end the video there for the time being. We'll start up again in part two. This video is just getting way too long as it is. So let, we'll see you on the next video and we will finish this thing up.